Performance improvement and the disciplinary process each have their own section in DHRM rules. However, the difference between the two and when each should be used is not exactly black and white. We're going to use this table to illustrate some of the differences between each process from the standpoint of perspective. What would generally cause you to employ each process? What is each intended to do? How long does each last? And who is the final authority on each? These questions might have very succinct practical answers that clearly point to one type or another, or they may seem to fall between the two. However, I do not want you to get too hung up about whether a particular action is performance improvement or discipline. What I want you to learn to do is to decide whether you would like to take a performance improvement approach to solving a problem or a disciplinary approach so that you can help your HR representative better assist you in selecting and implementing a solution. So first off, generally speaking, poor performance and some minor behavioral problems are best addressed with performance improvement, where outright misconduct and more serious behavioral problems typically warrant disciplinary actions. Minor behavioral problems that the employee fails to correct after performance improvement efforts may also be cause to consider the disciplinary route. Probably the clearest line between performance improvement and discipline can be drawn here as we consider the intent and goal of each process. With performance improvement, you will assist your employees to develop through non-punitive coaching, training, and feedback. With discipline, you are punishing them for performance failures or acts of misconduct. If an employee physically assaults a member of the public while on the job, it really doesn't make sense to engage in performance improvement. Similarly, when an employee fails to complete a log on rare occasions, it doesn't really make sense to administer discipline. When you have problems with employees, it will always be useful to ask yourself whether the coaching and almost hand-holding approach of performance improvement or the harder-edged punitive disciplinary process will best address the issue at hand. Duration is a significant difference between the two approaches. A formal performance improvement plan will generally last 90 days but even informal performance improvement efforts like giving more regular feedback or providing additional training will require ongoing efforts and follow-up by you. In contrast, discipline is usually very short in duration. State statute says that employees can be suspended up to 30 calendar days without pay, but it is rare to see a suspension in excess of two weeks. Demotions and dismissals are permanent actions, but once the decision is made, the penalty takes effect quickly. However, some performance improvement actions, such as a written warning to an employee for using unprofessional and foul language with a member of the public, may happen as quickly as a disciplinary action. So again, these are general characteristics, not hard, fast rules. Finally, performance improvement efforts are never grievable beyond the agency head. Most disciplinary actions can be grieved or appealed to the Career Service Review Office. We will look at the specifics of this in a later section of the training but generally speaking, your agency head will be the final authority on performance improvement actions, while disciplinary actions can go to the Career Service Review Office. As you can see, these are general guidelines and not black and white differences between performance improvement and discipline. Sometimes it may be difficult to choose which method will be most effective. Do not be alarmed if this is the case. It means that you understand the process and are being thoughtful about the discharge of your duties. This is a good thing.